Now this would be the second part for gear trains. That is called the epicyclic gear train. Okay, the epicyclic gear train. So now epicyclic gear train and simple gear train, the difference is for epicyclic, you can see there is an arm here. This arm here enables the gear, that means the driven gear, to be rolling around the driver gear. Okay, or the <clears throat> rotating or rolling around the driver gear. So it depends on whether you choose the gear A to be the driver or the gear B to be the driver. Okay, it will give you the same result. So let's say you choose gear A. Let's say you choose gear A to be the driver. Then the arm will help the gear B here to move around gear A or to roll around gear A. And we can also call this as the sun view and this as the planet view. So such an arrangement with the arm is called an epicyclic gear train, okay? So you have, let's say for example, this is the driver. So the arm will enable the gear B to move around gear A in this manner. So gear B in this case will be called the planet view and gear A to be the sun view. Okay, and we call them as epicyclic gear train. Now for case B here, for the second case, let's say we choose gear B to be the driver. Okay, then what happens to gear A? It will roll around gear B. So in this case, gear B will, call, will be called the sun view and gear A will be called the planet view, okay? So this case here, gear B is fixed to rotate around its own axis, but where gear A is around to move around gear B. So it depends on which one you choose to be the driver. Okay, or you have something like this. If let's say you choose B as the driver, then these two gear will be rolling around the gear B that is the driver gear and which is also called the sun view. So both of these will be called the planet view like this. Okay, so these are examples of epicyclic gear train. So to work on the train value or the speed ratio of epicyclic gear train, for example, this, Okay, first we have to fix both A and B. When we fix both A and B, then gear A and gear B will, call, will be called the simple gear train as what we have done earlier. Okay, if let's say point B is fixed, point A is also fixed, then the arrangement will be called the simple gear train. So what we do is, <clears throat> so you can see here, uh, when point A and point B are fixed, this whole arrangement will be called the simple gear train, okay? So what we can do is first we can work out based on simple gear train, if let's say both are point, this is the first assumption you have to make. Let the points here A and B to be fixed. So you can work out the train value, 
by b by taking b to be the subject then you have this equation here so once you have worked out this equation what you need to do is table okay the motion of elements elements here we have gear a is one mo uh, moving element gear b is another moving element and the arm is also a moving element by putting the moving elements here into a table form so we are going to solve problems based on a table form or tabular method so the first column here i've marked it as the conditions of motion which the condition of motion here are fixed okay for any simple epicyclic gear train any epicyclic gear train you can consider the same condition of motion so the second column should be the arm the arm okay then the third column should be the driver the fourth column should be the last driven gear okay so this case here you have only the arm gear a and gear b so that is why you have gear a and gear b in case if you have more than that then you have to draw more columns you have to draw more columns okay we will have examples i will have examples to show you so the first condition of you fix the arm and apply positive one revolutions to gear a fix the arm don't add the arm move okay so the arm motion will be zero the arm motion will be zero because you fix the arm so then you apply positive one revolutions to gear a that means this is one that means this is one so if this is one then you can find the speed of gear b like this so then the second condition is now most of the time the gear will not only rotate one revolution it will be rotate, rotating at million revolutions thousands of revolutions okay so let's say we consider as x revolutions unknown number of rotation for gear a so what we do is we put x into gear so then we will can we will be able to find the speed of gear b if we know the speed of gear a with x revolutions and then the third one is after that we release the arm these are fixed condition and you can always refer to these statements here but the gear here a that is the driver so if let's say for example you want to choose gear b to be the driver then you have to put a gear b so that is why i mark in red that means these are changeable changeable so it depends on whether you choose gear a or gear b to be the driver so in this case i choose gear a to be the driver so that is why i put a here and this column here is gear a then only after that is gear b if gear a is the driver if let's say gear b is a driver then you should put gear b here in this column and gear a on the next column and this should be written as b and d okay then you release the arm you release the arm let it rotate freely with y revolutions that means it's still unknown okay to all elements so what you have to do is if when you release the arm then you will have to add y revolutions that means which is unknown okay to gear a gear b and the arm itself then after that what you need to do is the last step here that means in this column the last step is you need to add up you need to add up from the second row and the third row second row and third row to give you the total motion okay so let us start so fix the arm apply positive one revolutions to gear a the arm is fixed so this should be zero okay and gear a should be one because you apply one revolution so this is one so you have one here positive one the positive in the table means anti-clockwise the positive sign in this table means anti-clockwise so you apply anti-clockwise one revolution so what is the speed of gear b so you just substitute positive one here so you get negative ta over tb this then the second step is again fix the arm so zero then this time you apply x to a gear a so if x revolution then what happens to gear b so you substitute x here so you have negative x ta over tb like this okay you you work out equation like that then release the arm plus y revolutions to all elements so you need to add y revolutions to a b and the arm this is a fixed step yeah when you release the arm so plus y plus y and plus y so now total motion you only add up these two row here you only add up these two row okay so you have this zero plus y you have y 
x plus y, and this is y minus x dA o t b. So you add up only these two rows to give you the total motion. So once you've got the total motion, that means, now, what is the speed of the arm? Speed of the arm, you should refer to this. Speed of arm, you should refer to y. Speed of gear A, you should refer to x plus y. Speed of gear B, you should refer to this. This is what we call a table form or a tabular method in solving questions on gear trains, epicyclic gear train. There's another method called relative motion, but uh, we will do it in the later stage, okay? So that's for this part, and thank you very much. See you again soon. Okay, this is on gear trains, example one. So we have an epicyclic gear train, gear A, gear B, and the arm. Yeah. Okay, so you have these two points here. So now question number one. An epicyclic gear epicyclic gear train, an arm carries two gears A and B. A and B. Okay? Both having 36 and 45 teeth respectively. So gear A is having 36 teeth, so smaller diameter. And gear B is having 45 teeth, so it is a larger pitch circle diameter. Now if the arm rotates at 150 RPM, so this arm here rotates 150 revolutions per minute in the anti-clockwise direction. So anti-clockwise in the table form should be positive about the center of gear A, about the center of gear A, okay, which is fixed. Now gear A is fixed, okay? Then they ask you to find the speed of gear B. Then the second part, they say, if the gear A, instead of being fixed, now makes 300 revolutions per minute in clockwise direction, what will be the speed for gear B? So you have the first case when K, uh, gear A is fixed, and the second case when gear A rotate at this speed, okay? So what you need to do is treat this as a simple gear train, taking the arm is fixed, okay, simple gear train, to all, uh, work out the train value, okay, the train value for the subject taking B or A, sorry, by taking A or B to be the subject. Here I have taken, okay, now, from this, okay, when you write down this, okay, that means we have treated gear B to be the driver. Okay, we have treated gear B to be the driver, where you can see driven gear is taken as an A. Okay, driver gear here, driver, is B. So you are, we are taking B to be the driver. So therefore, we have the subject as the driven gear, so an A, like this, in this form. Then only you start, okay, drawing out the table. Okay, so this will be the table with the condition of motion. So you can see I have only three steps. The first step usually can be ignored. That is when you take one revolution. So now fix the arm, apply positive X revolutions to gear B. So that means you consider gear B to be the driver. So you can see after the arm, you have the driver column here. So X revolutions to gear B, then the second condition, release the arm and apply positive Y revolutions to all elements. So that is why we plus Y throughout. And then total motion, you add up this whole row because you don't have the first row only, already. So we only consider the second and the third row. That means in this case is this first row and the second row. So you add up these two. So you've got Y, you add up these two, you've got X plus Y. You add up these two, you've got this. Okay, now how you got this? From here you can see, okay, B, you apply X revolutions, correct? So that is why it become negative X here. Okay, that the next step here is add Y revolutions throughout. So that is why you only plus Y here. Then total motion, you add up both this row here and this row here for B and this both for arm. Okay, so you got, basically this will be the speed of the arm this will be the speed of gear B, this will be the speed of gear A. So we go back to the question, they say, the first part, they say, the arm rotate 150 where gear A is fixed. 
gear A is fixed. So when gear A is fixed, that means this whole equation here, this is the speed of gear A, you have to equate to zero. Because why zero? Because the first part they say gear A is fixed. Remember, positive refers to anti-clockwise, okay? So the arm speed is y rpm, the gear B is x plus y rpm, and then this is for the gear A. So now, when the arm is positive 150, because they say 150 anti-clockwise, so that is why it's positive 150, the speed of arm, that means this is the one. Now, Y and A is zero, because the first part they say gear A is fixed, so that is why it's zero here. And it is equals to Y, this is zero, Y minus X T B over T A. So you have this equation. So based on this equation, okay, we write this. Okay, so you manipulate this, so you have this, and then x to be the subject. The first thing is find out the unknown x and y. Tb and ta is already given. Tb is 45, ta is 36. So you can just substitute 36, 35. Why? They have given positive 150 because they say positive, uh, they say 150 anti-clockwise. So that is why the y is positive 150. So from this, you can work out the x is equal to this much. So once you have found out x and you know y, you can actually find out the speed of gear B. So this is speed of gear B. So NB, that means the speed of gear B is actually x plus y. So you have found out the x is 120, the y is 150. So positive 150 because it's anti-clockwise. So you've got 270 anti-clockwise that is for gear B. Now the second case when they say gear A, makes 300 rpm clockwise so that means you take this equation here just now you equate to zero now you equate this to 300 negative 300 okay so and a is negative 300 and is equals to this here okay and then the y still remains the same positive 150 so from this remember your x to be found so it is the subject so bring this whole thing over to the left hand side and by substituting y which is 150 you will be able to find x 360. So once you know the x and the y for the second condition you can find the speed of gear b. So the speed of, speed of gear b is x plus y. So you have 360 x and y is 150 so you got that is why you got 510 rpm anti-clockwise for gear b. So this would be the first example. We will continue the next example on the next lesson. Thank you very much, everybody. Now, second example on gear trains. Okay, so now an epicyclic gear consists of three gears, A, which we call this as the annular gear, the B and gear C. So you have three gears, okay, annular gear, the teeth will be facing inside. Okay, gear B, which is the spur gear B and C, we have teeth facing outside. Gear A, which is called annular gear, I repeat once more, the teeth will be facing outside. So the, if you take the relationship between gear B and gear A, the rotation the direction of rotation would be the same between b and a the direction of rotation of gear b and c will be opposite okay so now an epicyclic gear consists of three gears a b and c as shown in the figure the gear a has 72 internal teeth so gear a here has 72 internal teeth for gear a internal teeth that means facing inside and gear C has a 32 external teeth. Gear C has 32 external teeth. Okay. Now the gear B meshes with both A and C. Gear B here mesh with gear A and mesh with gear C. <coughs> is carried on an arm EF. So B and C is carried by the arm of this. Okay. EF. This is called EF, yeah, which rotates about the center of A at 18 RPM anti-clockwise. 
Now, if gear A is fixed, if you consider gear A is fixed, the question asks us to consider gear A is fixed, then find out the speed of gear B and gear C. So, basically, when you refer to this question that has given us the teeth for gear A and gear C without the teeth of gear B. So what we have to do is we have to find out the teeth, the number of teeth for gear B. So we take the geometry of this diagram. So when you take a look here from this center line here that I've drawn, red line. Okay, so from the center to gear A, okay, we consider this as radius A. Okay, and then this as radius C, this as diameter B. So if you take diameter B plus radius of C based on the geometry will be equals to the radius of gear A. Okay, so radius of gear A, okay, plus, oh sorry, radius of gear A is equal to diameter of gear B plus radius of gear C. So if you take that, times 2 throughout, you get diameter of gear A equals to diameter of gear C plus 2 times the diameter of gear B, diameter of gear B. So by referring to equal module, if let's say we assume that the module is the same between all the gears, then you can use the formula of M equals to D over T. So or you can directly change db to db t is number of teeth d is pitch circle diameter and this will be tc and this will be ta okay so they have given us tc is 32 and ta is 72 remember this equation here is developed from based on the geometry of this diagram here okay taking or taken about this center line, red line here. Okay, so you substitute gear A, TA, which has 72 teeth, and TC, gear C, which has 32 teeth. So then you can find out the gear of number of teeth for gear B by taking 72 minus 32 divided by 2. So the TB is 20. Okay, so this is based on equal module. So that is why we can change diameter, pitch circle diameter to number of teeth. Then once you have got all that done, all those done, okay, remember, okay, for the train value, we consider speed of driven gear, this is gear, yeah, over the speed of the driver equals to negative because when it is opposite in direction, you put negative between the neighboring gear equals to number of teeth of driver, okay, opposite, and the driven okay so now let us assume that gear c to be the driver you can actually assume gear a or gear c to be the driver we always consider the outermost or the innermost gear to be the driver either one you will get the same answer okay you can also consider b to be the driver but then the uh, calculation or the tab tabular method here becomes more complicated so that is why we always choose the outer or the inner, okay? So between C and B, if I choose to be the driver, then C will be the driver, B will be the driven. So the driven is NB, the driver is NC, okay? So it's equals to negative. If this is NB over NC, then you should write here as TC over TB. If you take NC over NB, then here you should write TB over TC, opposite, okay? So negative sign shows that these two spur gear here, B and C, they are opposite in direction, rotating in opposite direction. So that is why there is a negative sign. So taking N B to be the subject, that is the speed of the driven, you get this equation. So once you have developed this equation, then we go ahead with B and C. So we consider now B is transmitting motion to gear A. So B will be the driver, A this time will be the driven. So you have driven over driver equals to positive TB over TA. Remember, this is always opposite to this. So the positive sign here shows that because it's between B and A. 
it is external heat. So it causes the direction of rotation to be the same. So that is why this is positive. So changing speed of gear A to be the subject. So you will get this. Okay. So then after that, you want to build up the relationship between gear C and the gear A. Then you should substitute NB, which is equal to this, into this equation here. So you have this part here. Okay, negative positive, so that is why you have negative sign. So then you look at this equation here now, TC over TA. The last part should be TC over TA negative, and C, TC over TA, because TB and TB, you will cancel it off. So that is why here, the table, you have this. Okay, now, then you go ahead with the table. Remember the conditions of motions. Actually, the first row you can ignore. You can ignore the first row, okay? The condition by X revolutions to gear C, that is to the driver. Positive here means anti-clockwise. You assume it is anti-clockwise. Gear C, we have chosen to be the driver. So put gear C here and gear C, then continue with C to B. So that is why the neighboring column is gear B. And then after B, the neighboring is A. So that is why the last column is gear A. So <clears throat> here we say put positive X revolutions to gear C. So you look at gear C here, the last part here, or when you look at gear C, if NC here is X, then B would be negative X TC over TB. See here, negative X TC over TB. So if gear C is X, okay, then look at gear A, okay. So this one cancel off D. So NC becomes, okay, X. NC become X, so you have negative X TC or TA. Then you add positive Y throughout, okay. These are the fixed condition. Second row, third row, and fourth row. Then total motion, you add them up. So zero plus Y, so you have Y, X plus Y. Then you have this y minus x tc over db, and this is y minus x tc over ta. So you got this is the speed of the arm, this is the speed of gear C, this is the speed for gear B, this is the speed for gear A. Okay, so they say if gear A is fixed, our gear A, if let's say this gear A is fixed, so the speed of gear A here will be equals to this one is speed of gear A will be equals to zero. So that is why you see this equation here. That is why it is equals to zero. Then you put in your 32, your 72, and your 18. Why is 18? Because they have given us the arm EF rotates 18 RPM anti-clockwise. So that's why the Y is positive 18. So first unknown is X. The first unknown is y, sorry, which is given 18. Then you found the second unknown, which is the x, 40.5 RPM. So once you got your x and y, actually now you can find out your gear, speed of gear B. Okay? So speed of gear B, you just substitute what you have given. Y is 18. X, you have found out 40.1, sorry, 40.5. TC is 32. TB, we have found that is equals to 20. So substitute everything. Now the speed of gear B, which is negative 46.8 RPM. So if you want to find speed of gear C, here, look at this last part here. So this would be the speed of gear C, and C would be equal to X plus Y. So once you've got X, you have given, the question have given us the Y18. So you can find out the speed of gear C which is positive, so that means this gear C will be rotating anti-clockwise, gear B will be rotating in clockwise direction. Okay, that's for question two or example two. Okay, so the next will be on the next lesson or the next slide. Thank you very much.